Yeah, he's saying go, go, go. Welcome back to the Acoustic Shop channel. I am John. Hey guys, it is New Guitar Thursday. Get to go. Hello, everybody. Welcome. We're live. Hi. Welcome to Shop Hi, Talk. Hi, guys. This is where the Chapmans will typically play whatever song you want, but we have two Chapmans today and one Liz. And one Liz who doesn't know every song under the sun. Who we don't know any of these songs either. <laughs> Baloney. I don't you know guys, them. They, I've heard a lot of songs. I've yeah, heard a lot of songs. And then somehow you keep them stuck in your head and then you can just <laughs> play them. And that's not how I do it. I have to practice for a very long time to figure out how it's to play fake. a song. So do I to get them right, but we just don't oh, even care anymore. Gosh. This is the difference. Here's what's happened. Me, Jeremy, and Jason have come to a point in our lives where nothing matters anymore. We have zero... I, I got no pride. I, I have zero pride. That's exactly you tell what it me, is. You tell me we're playing in G, and then all of a sudden you guys are doing all sorts of spectacular solos, and I can't even remember what comes after the G. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the struggle. I, there are many <laughs> options to come after G, by the way. Uh, so yeah. you know, but there, when you're moving lightning there's fast. There's like an A, <laughs> B, C. Yeah, but which one? <coughs> which one? By the time I've already sorted it out, you guys yeah. have gone to the next chord. I want to apologize ahead. I have just come over some sort of cough thing, and there's the end of this cough is sticking around. So if I hack Stop and gag smoking. all over this, I apologize. Uh, Trent, does anybody have cough drop that's sitting around today? No. I have absolutely no idea. If or gum. Drop that would be building. good, too. All right. If anybody in the shop well, has gum or cough drops, I I we'll look into that. I but will pass on the nicotine <laughs> lozenge. <laughs> we'll we'll look into that. But in the meantime, uh, the Chapmans are here and Liz to play all of your song requests. At the very minimum, they will attempt. Yeah, if I'll anything, attempt These guys we will, will set some audios low. I can definitely turn that up. Uh, but we will definitely also be answering any of your questions, uh, playing whatever instruments if you want. If you go to our website, www.theacousticshop.com, there's a plethora of instruments that we have next door. Yeah. And we have the ability to bring those just over we, here. We've decided that this is a, a yeah. good opportunity for you guys out there. If you are looking at any of the instruments, this is the live show. And we can get them over here. We, we just thought about that because lately people have been asking us, hey, how about we hear the such and such? And we're like, well, we didn't or bring how it does over this here. Compare to this? And Give so Hinkley now is having you guys ship stuff over here. I just what thought if, I'd bring it up, you know, it's a possibility, had, so might as well do it. Yeah. And if we had Corey dressed up in a suit, a tux, so he could come in and present this, the. This by is the way, why Liz is. By the way, this is exactly today. how every <laughs> brainstorm <laughs> meeting. Mm -hmm. This is how every brainstorm thing goes with <laughs> Liz. We always go. All right, hear me out. 
We have such and such wear a banana outfit, and it just, I, don't, I, I don't know where. We have an Eastman MD <laughs> such and such, or you'll take what's in the case. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh I love it. Add a tuxedo. Okay, so we, we should probably play some music. What are you guys going to start out with, though, today? Uh, Is it a tuxedo t-shirt, though? A tuxedo t-shirt? Yeah, we Is can that do that. Prefer? Um, I think we're going to start with Jolene, but Hugh, could you bring up those lyrics? Cause yes, I can. many of years since I've played this song. Absolutely, I can. Two, three. I was going to let you stall. I'm begging of you, please don't take my hand. Jolene, 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 Jolene. with dolly that was a great one for those that are just joining us welcome 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 please like and share this stream wherever you may be uh david already is saying good morning everyone did jeremy die again yes unfortunately guess what ladies and gentlemen unfortunately yes is dead (laughs) oh unfortunately it is Jeez, guys. I've been looking Sorry. forward to that day for a while. <laughs> oh my God, that was wrong. Sorry, was I speaking out loud? Yeah, oh, you gosh. were. Oh my God, he went to a full. I've been thinking of that day for a while. He said, "Jeez, well, it's dark." For those that don't what don't know what we're doing today, Sans Jeremy. I don't um, know what we're doing today. You don't know what we're doing today? Okay, cool. Nope. Well, we're gonna be playing some instruments. Yeah, we're answering right. all your questions. Please tell nope. us where you're watching from. Already, Orfix on YouTube says, "Hey from Oregon. Hope you guys are good. Can we do Gold Rush at some point? Maybe. 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 Hopefully, Jeremy gets here. We'll get that. Ooh, There's we have a hello from the Philippines already. Also, which is really awesome. That's awesome. They have Dolly Parton in the Philippines. Did you know that? They have Dolly Parton in the Philippines. Yeah, I mean, they listen to it, of course. Yeah. Yeah. There is no bigger worldwide phenomenon than Dolly Parton. It's That's a fact. correct. That is She's absolutely. She's a true world gem. That is absolutely and correct. I, I love her so much. I So me and my wife were talking about this. All right, everybody mourned the loss of Betty White. Like, this was probably one of the biggest tre- treasures in the world. But I think Dolly is going to be even bigger than that. I think she's eternal, so I don't think we have to Well, there is that. that. There is that. But seriously, like, think about this. All right, we have a movie star. We have a music star. 
not only that, but like one of the biggest philanthropists in the world. Mm -hmm. Guys, we wouldn't have a COVID vaccine, probably if it had not been for Dolly. Mm -hmm. Reading? Holy smokes. Have you guys know about the reading library for yeah. children? Yeah. My nephews. Every my child nephews. gets a book from Dolly Parton. What is it, like once yeah. a month, too? It's a lot. It's, it's crazy. A lot my kids get them through yeah. their grandparents. Yeah. What do they do? Claim that they're they signed children? Up. Yeah, I think they signed up for the kids. I That's the weirdest thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, show up somehow. <laughs> no, Dolly is is like impressive. And I just heard her do another rock album. We did. She did a cut. Yeah, uh, we did a cut uh, a while back of Shine, and uh, put that on our YouTube channel. But that was based off of Dolly's version of it, which was really really cool. That's cool. Yeah. Have you she, met Dolly Parton? Awesome. I have not. That's crazy. I wanted the chance to get her on a record, but we didn't. Make yeah, it. we almost got what? her to, to sing on the album. It was this close. That'd be crazy. And then ended up uh, our timing wore out, so we put Sonia Isaacs on there instead of Dolly. Hmm. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it just didn't work out that good for hmm. that particular time. So. Ooh, we have a like, greetings oh, from Austria. A uh, hello from Edinburgh, Virginia. Alex A did point out, plus she's a really good songwriter. That's yep. absolutely that was true. My next I mean, one. her songwriting is By the way, did you insane. know the story of Jill, Jolene and the, the banker and the, no. they didn't go to the bank? The, I thought it was about a little girl that had beautiful hair. and. That's not the way Dolly is telling oh. the story now. <laughs> and I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know. But I, I, I thought it was that uh, there was a, her husband was in a bank processing a loan and there was this girl in there uh, that was the bank person and it became a thing in her head. Uh, mm -hmm. I, correct me if I'm wrong, internet, you know you Either will. Way, uh, it will know. happen. I do know that she wrote Jolene and the other one, I Will Always Love You on the same day, which is kind of crazy. That that has been said before. That's we need crazy. to do, again, I, 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 I don't know how you switch gears like that uh, from the two different types of songs, but She's an awesome songwriter. Yeah. Did you know, uh, here's another thing that I found out about Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton used to go into the cabin you know, up in the mountains and she would fast for a long period of time when she would do writing sessions. And she would just stay up there and fast and write songs. Wow. That's crazy. I did not know that at all. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, aside from the Dolly Parton talk, <laughs> this has turned into a Dolly Parton stream. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see if we have any questions going on. Uh, Devin on Facebook is asking, can we do a bit of Wildwood Flower? What do you think? Sure, we can do that. Sure. You'll have you to sing it. One. It's in C. I don't want to sing it. I'm just doing it. I'm not singing it. Okay. Put it in C. Real quick, he also said, thanks for all the hard work recently on Walnut Valley and IBMA. Thank you guys so much. Yeah. That's where we're going to Well, we enjoyed doing it. It was a lot of yeah, fun. Yeah, it was fun. I'm very tired still, but I enjoyed doing it. So. All right, QC, ladies and gentlemen. One, two, three. Wildwood Flower right there, ladies and gentlemen. Nice. Every, every flat-picking guitar player has to learn the Wildwood Flower. Did you know that? 
-hmm. At least if you go through uh, Lessons with John, every single one of them has to learn the Wildwood Flower. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I, I tortured every student with that song, and uh, I, saw, I stole your tune without even asking. That was rude, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. I apologize, Liz. Um, <clears throat> so much so that one of my students bought me a copy of an album, an old 45, and hung it on my wall. It's like you made me play this song and I didn't want to. When you sing it, do you say flower or do you say flower? Flower. As I never say it. Did you ever sing it? Uh, I would sing it with my students when I would um, steal your tabs for this. So. <laughs> I like that that was a thing. How did they like uh, having stolen tabs? Um, did anybody like it? Yeah. All right. I mean, I would play the chords and I'd teach them kind of how to, how to play that song. If they were getting frustrated with finger picking, which sometimes they would. All right, couple. We got a question, John. Couple more yep. questions. Yep. So this one, specifically from Chicago guitarist. What do you think about Eastman in comparison to other boutique builders? All right. Uh, so honestly, it's not truly a boutique build, uh, and I'm not trying to dish or dig on uh, Eastman at all. It's not designed to be. Uh, it's to me, it's a step up uh, production stuff, more closer to Gibson Martin. It's a hand uh, Taylor production guitar. Yes, a production guitar, uh, where boutique guitars are a little bit different, like the bourgeois. Now that said, they keep leaning further into the bourgeois line or the boutique line by way of bourgeois. They've recently changed up their bracing, uh, building it more like uh, Dana does to his me, stuff. To me, boutique means something that's spent a lot of time on and is a step above. Mm -hmm. So Eastman wouldn't fall under that category. No. That said, I find Eastman to be a production line guitar, not necessarily mass produced guitar, because that's a totally different thing. They're hand built and uh, done, but more in the worlds of the, like I said, Gibson, Martin, Taylor, uh, the main lines of hand built guitars. They're as boutique as Martin <clears throat> is boutique, at least in their exactly. main line. How has Eastman changed up their bracing? So Eastman, if you have to start not, I'm surprised you haven't noticed this, Liz. If you have not noticed, they have thinned all their bracing to be more like bourgeois. It's thinner in width, taller, in order hmm. to uh, create more space for the soundboard to have uh, uh, its vibration space, but also allow for strength. So they tend to be a little bit taller braces, thinner, and they're kind of leaning in more on the style of what bourgeois well, builds. I'll be. I didn't know that. There's been a, a, a whole swerve on it, and we've been talking about this. We are eventually going to have a video comparison talking about uh, Eastman's original sound and voicing versus uh, the new uh, style, and whether post, or not people love it. Post-bourgeois post uh, acquisition. Yeah. There's definitely been a lot of stuff. This has been a common theme too. Uh, for Eastman, Eastman's done worked with other companies before, before Bourgeois in the in the B and O or band and orchestra world. Uh, they've done it with flutes and clarinets and saxophones, Tubers. and they work with yeah with some of the biggest companies in the U.S. And then they partner up with them. And one of the things that you always see is a lot of the technology and things that they had in those USA boutique level products slowly creeps in to the, I mean it just makes sense because they're just you know they're learning all this Take stuff. Take the best yeah. of what you got. Yeah mm -hmm. and and kind of tie it in. So we're definitely seeing that happen um, <clears throat> with those. So uh, speaking of which you've got an Eastman in here. We'll probably be I switching do. and I've got a bourgeois in here at the same time. Facts. So. Yeah somebody uh, Chris on Facebook did ask what we were playing and we uh, will definitely get to that. Uh, Alex is asking Kate Wolf song or maybe a Dylan one. I know that you have some Bob Dylan songs that you know, Liz. I know, I know two. You know a couple? All right, let's do them all. Okay. Let's do so all of them. That will definitely be done. <laughs> um, really good, in quest good question, real quick. What's the newest song that you've learned from Divided I've by Time? Do so you guys know that? Songs. I, yeah, the that, song that it depends on what you're saying. Now, now I'm gonna learn a bunch of new songs because I got to play with Tina <coughs> Dare next month. That's probably the last time songs. I had to learn a bunch of songs. Uh, we both have a mutual friend, very very talented uh, lady by the name of Tina Adair. Um, she's been touring. I did some fill-in shows with her. I had to learn all that material. That was the last time I like learn learn stuff. Now Jason is gonna do bass. It's been three years since I those. learned new songs. <coughs> Are you excited about it? I'm gonna take Eli with me, and we're gonna hang out for yeah, the weekend. But that's gonna be great. Yeah. I'm excited about the prospect of learning two sets of material. 
Yeah, that sounds very <laughs> stressful. Jason had to do that with <coughs> my band. I never learned that. Oh, <laughs> well, you couldn't it. tell. See, that's what I'm saying. Um, I didn't get Liz, soda today or cough drop. Liz or handed gum. me I'm, a, I'm dying here a today. book full of charts and just didn't even tell me what <laughs> the song was. <laughs> it's like she'd start the song and then I'd have to try to find the chart, and most of the time I just wouldn't even try. Yeah. Da oh. David Garber um, is asking more info on the Eastman TAS special. I will talk about you in that, but there is news, and I'm really excited about it. So stick around. We'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, Chicago guitarist has asked, how would you compare HD28s to Eastman's E20Ds? I think you should say them. this before you respond to this. Okay. We got a video coming out within a month, I'm sure. But not with HD28s. No, not 28s, but It's D18s. 18 versus uh, yeah. 8 and 6. 8 and 6 and... Well, it was six no, and ten. Six and yeah. ten. Yeah. 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 Never mind. Yeah. Um, you got it. So close. Uh, <laughs> already, I can tell you, uh, and you guys aren't going to be surprised. They 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 fit favorably to that. Um, that's basically what they're designed to be. They more are like. more separate than they used to be, though. They are more separate. I would Definitely say. Different sound. The lean on the Eastman now tends to be f a little further away from the Martin uh, deep, chunky sound, whereas there's a little more detail and articulation. But you also get an a Adirondack spruce top with an E20D that you don't get with an HD28. So uh, it's interesting. It is very interesting. I really do want to cover this video of what the, uh, the voicings of Eastman have gone through. And is it a good thing? Yeah. That's the big question. Some people are going to argue maybe it isn't a good thing. I don't know. This is going to be very interesting. So mm -hmm. I say they're comparable. I definitely would recommend playing them against each other if, that, if you're in the market for an HD28 style guitar, especially if you're looking for something in a much better buy, definitely the, H the E20D is something to kind of pay attention to. So On TikTok, we got the question, have you ever played a Sigma acoustic guitar from the 70s? 70s. All right. Yes, I did. Uh, so the Sigma, you remember the Sigma guitars? We had a couple of them in here, 70s and Do 80s. Do you have one, Trent? No, he's got a uh, Shenandoah. Shenandoah. Oh. Different series. Sigma was the all laminate. Sometimes they had some solid tops on them, but that was the import line for uh, Martin guitars. They were called Martin Sigmas, and it was basically like the Epiphone is to Gibson. Um, who else would I? I guess nobody else at that time had. I, I, Martin had Sigma. It was their import copies of their guitars. Um, so I think they, to the guitars of that era, they were favored comparable. That said, uh, Martin guitars of the 70s and 80s variety are not revered as the finest of sound or playability that they were that they ever built. So, mm -hmm. that said, I think they built a good guitar. It's a vintage guitar nowadays, so there is some of that that has its advantages, usually affordable. Uh, do I think they stack up in the world of today's uh, more boutique and uh, even Martin's guitars? No, I don't. I, that's, I get my, my impression of them. Okay. Another interesting question from TikTok, is it worth buying an older Martin D35? Absolutely. That, I mean, this is a loaded question for what? I mean, it's always worth buying that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you would, you would take a, a, an older HD or a D35, wouldn't you? Yes, unless... All of this is just saying older, so I guess it could kind of like what? Depend on how old, depend on the condition, if you like the sound of it. The I mean, condition is really important yeah. with that. So... If you have the opportunity to buy one, um, check out things like neck angle, uh, the bridge, make sure that things are original on it, that you want an original, like a, a bridge is pretty important to be original for value and... I was always... <laughs> Did you bring that around? Yeah. Well, how kind are you? <laughs> you could have come through the door. Yeah, that's very, very kind. <laughs> it would have been pretty Thank funny. you very much, Reagan. You're the best. And John, sorry, John just got supplied for cough drops <laughs> in case anybody <laughs> did on this. I cut off the, uh, by the way, uh, Reagan, in case you didn't catch our Monday uh, message, Reagan is going to be leaving us at the end of the month. It's not on bad terms. She didn't throw a fit. And st Although I bet you will, right? Are you going to take your last day and just like full on cuss everybody out, skip Burn the finger the and just go? <laughs> oh, true. True, that is pretty well the day, the daily end. Of, it's Sorry, guys, it's 5 o'clock. <laughs> that was the secret. <laughs> I hit it well. I've okay. seen it. I've seen it on the cameras. 
So don't you try to hide that from us. Anyway, she will be leaving at the end of the month. Sorry, but we're going to get the most interrupt. work out of her yeah. that we possibly can. Yes, D35, older. You're still talking about D35? Yeah, just to make sure it's not squirrely when you buy it, because yeah. sometimes people will bring in instruments that they think is like a very high value guitar, but a lot of modifications have been done to it, and then I have to break the news that like there's a lot of unoriginal parts to yeah. it, and um, you kind of got a turd. So just don't buy oh a turd. Oh my god! Don't <laughs> buy turds! Don't buy turds. Don't buy turds. <laughs> it's really that simple, guys. You can polish them, but... A turd is a turd. <laughs> a turd, is a turd. <laughs> okay, a couple more questions. I There's do some just great questions, wanna... but we also need to play. I, I know. I want to go. Play. I want to get through these questions real quick. Okay, again from TikTok, just real quick. Thoughts on Orangewood? Orangewood. I've never played any. I like. I'm them. skeptical. Yeah, uh, I, I've only seen like two or three, but in here at the shop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, repairs oh, and never such. Never seen one. Um, they have like for a for a. Uh, Moderately priced guitar, I would say they're pretty good. Okay. Um, I would, yeah, like as a beginner guitar, just something like you're starting out with, like that's one that you're not gonna have a really hard time playing it or anything like that. There's not cool. too many weird things going on. There's with two them. things that I'm skeptical of, and again, I know this is my deal. I have not seen an orange wood, but I've seen the videos and all that, and it makes me a little bit skeptical of how they're being marketed. The other one is Zager, and we get asked that one a lot. I have seen those guitars. I'm extremely skeptical of that guitar. Right I am there. extremely skeptical with the Zagers <laughs> as well. So, uh, I, we'll give you our opinion. I, I, yeah. I'm not gonna lie to you and tell you, I have not played the Orangewood. I just, they seem to market almost identical to Zager, and that makes me worry, because I mm -hmm. have seen the Zagers, and I'm like, ah, you're not gonna trick me. Orangewood <laughs> is marketing to a younger crowd, and they have, they, they have, I think they have pretty good marketing for what their goal is to try and, you know, sell to. There you anything. go. All right, there's so many great questions I want to I get know. back in here. Liz, sing do. us one of your favorite Bob Dylan songs. Okay. okay. Please. And then afterwards we will get to Kitty M's Canada. We will definitely get to that question. Uh, Bill, we will answer that question. And then any other questions that you guys have? As well as we will discuss the instruments that John and Liz are playing. I'm oh, doing, doing it. Yeah. E flat. Yeah. Can I do it in E flat? Is that okay? <laughs> no. Boy. Hey, Hinkley, will you bring up Don't Think Twice lyrics? All right, kick us off. We can start it. Get them. I wish 
was talking anyway, but don't think twice, it's alright. Turn around. loved a woman, a child I'm told I give her my heart, but she wanted my soul But don't think twice, it's alright I love you Welcome everybody on the stream, by the way. For those of you that are just joining us on TikTok, we are playing any of your requests or anything. Man, I am telling you, John today. this pays oh off to grow <laughs> to wine and mope. <laughs> and I have the greatest staff in the whole world. And you want to know what I love about this the most? By the way, that was Janelle, <laughs> brought me a drink. I had Reagan bring me some cough drops. I want to say this. None of them would have done that for Jason because he's a jerk. And I just want to point that out. That's not true. That's not nice. And not That's true. not true. The thing I worry about, though, is the whining and the moaning, and it's being encouraged by the stuff that's. I know. Please being bring me more. We probably shouldn't encourage yeah. you, should we? It means I get an extra five minutes for lunch. It gets an extra five minutes for lunch. Absolutely. Also, shout thank out you to so Janelle much, Janelle. Because, uh, she has the Shut most up, amazing no. sweater game I've ever seen. <laughs> no, has a pretty insane Oh my gosh, I'm just, game, I, every day I get excited to come in because I see she's got another beautiful new sweater on. <laughs> there, there's <sighs> three people in this place that, approve, that, uh, that enjoy sweaters. Jeremy, Liz, and now Janelle. Mm -hmm. And are you a sweater person too, Emily Hinkley? is. Emily? Oh, Emily. Have you seen her? Yeah, oh, I, yeah I saw that sweater, sweater today. You know, I, I, had to, I had to ban sweaters <laughs> on the sales floor. Remember, we had a big battle about this. I'm going to have to bring back a day, a month that people can wear sweaters, I guess, on the sales floor. Mm, yeah, probably. Oh, it's man. pretty important. Sweaters are great. Heck yeah. Sweater blazers, amazing. <laughs> sweater blazers? Sweater blazers, mm -hmm. yes. Okay, so. All right, can I cover quick. what I'm playing for us? Because I know uh, Liz wants to switch me and play this one. Yeah, this is yeah Liz does want to play she this one. She wants this guitar so bad. We should probably so do that first. So real quick, we're going to talk about the instruments that we are playing. Mm -hmm. By we, I mean John and Liz. And then we will answer all of your burning questions. All right, so incredible guitar that just came in. Liz played it for the first time yesterday, right? Yesterday, first time? Mm -hmm. um, we got it in on Monday, uh, yeah, while we were doing the yeah, uh, we big unboxing. This is a limited, only building 20 of these, right? Yeah, yes. 20 of this. This is number eight of 20. It is a special batch of Brazilian rosewood that Dana got a hold of at Bourgeois. He built a limited edition guitar. It's a triple O, 14 fret, short scale guitar. Um, it has an Adirondack spruce top, uh, has uh, Brazilian rosewood sides and back. And here's the big deal, it's about $5,000 less than what they normally sell this guitar for. But we've seen pictures of like three or four of these now that are online from other dealers that they got. 
by far the nicest set that I've seen of all of them. And I want to say this one price is right at around 12, which again, like I said, is about $5,000 less than normal for uh, a uh, bourgeois Brazilian rosewood guitar. Why did they do that? There was a, uh, so I asked Dana about this. Actually, I went out to dinner with him at, at the NAMM show, and I said, all right, tell me about this new guitar that you guys announced. You're only going to build 20. we got enough sets to build 20 small sets. Here's the situation. He told me the, there was a luthier up in Maine that had collected some Brazilian rosewood. They are all small pieces, and that he had passed away, and his uh, widowed wife wanted to find a place to do them, so they sold at a really, really good price. Dana knew about them and got them to Bourgeois, and what he decided to do is, since the pricing is so high for, Bo or for Brazilian right now, and he got such a good price on this, since it was such older stuff, to build a, a short run of these. Um, and that's the big deal. Everybody's asking, why is Brazilian so expensive? Costs have gone up. Uh, I've been, I just recently talked to Hudson Dalton, who said that buying sets of Brazilian is more than what they were selling guitars for. Uh, about five or six years ago. Yikes. So just buying the sets, there's just so little of them and what is out there is not of the quality that they want to see. So that's bringing the prices way up higher. This is incredible sounding. The sides are great. I love mm -hmm. the graduation of the color uh, from a light color to the dark Brazilian on the sides. Uh, it plays wonderfully and Liz has been in love with it. I think it's one of the nicest. Uh, I actually like it better than any of the OMs I played, which is what Dana's uh, been known for. This sounds fabulous. Yeah. So. Uh, oh, yeah. Price on this incredible. one again, do you remember? It is uh, 12499 dollars 12499 So I know that's right here pricey for, for some, but it's a heck of a guitar. So that's what I have. And then we'll switch back because Liz wants to play that yes, one and not any more dreads. She's done. Real quick, John did just mention Huss and Dalton. I know that we have a couple. We have a couple in here. We have at least one in stock right now. Yeah. I'm planning on bringing them back in uh, if everything works out. Uh, we've talked about it for the future. The problem is they're so far out on their builds uh, that uh, it's kind of hard to kind of... Are they even farther than, like, Thompson? Right now they told me if I put in my order right now, we probably wouldn't see it till fall of next year. So late summer, fall of mm -hmm. next year, which makes it kind of hard um, to kind of plan that out, especially with all the guitars I know I've got coming in. i got to figure out what comes in where and how many I can... Kind of yes. stock and, and build for it, so. Speaking of another guitar that just came in, E40D TC. Um, these are great. We very rarely get to see them. Uh, they're just hard to come by, but now with the TC, this one doesn't have a guard on it. This guitar, just like the one before it, is very, very special, and I called uh, Eastman and I said, all right, guys, I want to keep this just because. This guitar gives you one note that no other 14 fret guitar gets you, and that is a C note. It has one extra fret right here. Do we know why they're doing that yet? No, neither does Eastman. I'll be honest. I called up to Pomona, and uh, the funny thing about this is they're not noticing it in Pomona which makes me a little bit concerned. I'm not going to lie. Jason's smiling right now because he's like, should we be bringing this out in front of people live? I say, why not? If they're going to do it, we're going to... Gonna... They didn't notice it, and then it shows up here, and me and Trent unboxed it, and Trent goes, uh, they did it again. <laughs> we got one extra fret. But I find this to be of huge value. You measured the last one. We haven't measured this one yet, but I assume it's going to be exactly the same. It scales out correctly mm -hmm. at 25.4, um, intonation, is, intonation perfect. is perfect all the way through. They just have one extra fret in here that shouldn't be there, but yet is. So I like it. I think it's cool. I want to own a guitar that has a C that nothing else has. I think that's great. This is why they're doing it. This is, their, <laughs> this is their new issue, so. This is the new inspection happens. guy. This is who's doing cues. The new right fret guy. Now. It's that, that camera there. I hope you can see that. It's, it's great. The new fret guy. Oh my God. I love it. I, I love it. <laughs> I love that. I that's, wouldn't have hired him. I, I love great. that that's who you pictured in your head. That's who's the new fret guy in uh, the factory. Seriously, Good guys. Lord. <laughs> the best part about this, like I told Dan yesterday, I said, here's the deal. There's not even a cutaway to get to it, but I still want this note. This is the one I've been, every I cannot tell you how many times I've been playing my guitar and I'm like, I can't get that one. Mm -hmm. 
and I can now. Yeah, just yeah. pacing back and forth. You just want it so bad. And now you have it. Why can't I play it? Why can't I play it? Uh, <laughs> okay. But seriously, listen to it. That sounds fabulous. It's East Indian uh, Rosewood sides and back. They do the herringbone on the backs of all the 40 series. The right amount of abalone, in my opinion. It always color matches, which I love. The uh, cat's eyes and snowflakes inlay pattern bound all the way across. Everything good. And we also found out gold-plated 510 tuners, which, again, we all love in here because we've seen too many of the other tuners that we don't love. So. That thing is classy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So on to the questions. We had a quick one on TikTok real quick that was just, uh, what picks are you guys using? What picks do you use? Um, I have pretty much sold on the Tone Slab stuff right now. Right now I've been using this one uh, because I've been too lazy to buff out the other two that I have, but I love the 1.3 uh, Tri-XL round, three rounded corners. This one I love because look at that. You see what's on there? You Is see? That there? You see? Oh. Ooh. Yeah, you didn't see that? <laughs> that no. JC. How about that, ladies and gentlemen? How about them Kansas City Chiefs, uh huh? Huh, Jake? Thoughts. How about those Kansas City Chiefs? It's Jake? not like they're blowing the world up. <laughs> they're they're not going to make the Super Bowl this year because your boy Mahomes is failing. Nope. They're doing just fine. He's getting by on Scores, some really bad numbers. Wins are wins, my friend. Yeah, and I always love wins. <laughs> <laughs> wins are, are wonderful. Hey, you got a defense on your side and the refs. And the refs. <laughs> Have you guys seen, I guess now there's also a big push, there's been a push against uh, Kansas City Chiefs, by the way, about refs, in case you guys haven't been seeing this. There's a supposedly a story that's being done. But lately, I've been also hearing this for the Bills. Everybody yeah. believes NFL. I'm starting to believe, and I know this is conspiracy nut world, but I'm starting to be, believe there's a script. Oh, my gosh. The oh NFL no. is scripted every year. Don't be one of those guys. <laughs> they Get, want it to turn out a certain that. way. Who's the, who's the quarterback for the Bills? Allen. Josh Allen. Josh Allen. He looks like a Disney prince. So So you think that's what it's going <laughs> on? I think that's why. Everybody says yeah, the Sideshow NFL. Sideshow Bob and <laughs> Sideshow Bob. Yeah, Side Show Bob and Prince Charming. <laughs> <laughs> Who wouldn't want them to play? <laughs> I certainly do. I like to see them play. They're oh very God. fun to watch. So that is if hilarious. It's a script. It's a script. That's what I'm saying. Okay. I'm here for Before it. We get Pat to... Oh, but wait a second. <laughs> He's going after Side Joe Bob. When meanwhile, everybody knows Taylor Swift fans are ruling the NFL. Apparently, they broke up. <gasps> All right. What? I might po posted that today. On oh on my God! Is this true? Oh, gosh. They just showed up in public <laughs> holding hands. My daughter is all upset. Uh, officially, Travis Kelsey is holding hands with Taylor Swift. It's, and she's upset about that. Yeah, it's one of those. They're obsessed <sighs> with Travis Kelsey. Oh my goodness! I bet there was quite the pajama party. <laughs> Oh I bet they got out the sleeping bags. <laughs> Hello, <fighting> and <laughs> <laughs> I think they curled each other's hair. <laughs> probably. Anyway, all right, we should probably do Answers another question. Okay, so somebody was asking real quick. The price on the E40 it should be twenty six. That no, sounds 2600. right. Twenty six hundred. Twenty six hundred. So it's twenty five ninety nine. Twenty five ninety nine. Yeah. Okay. It. Uh, the ninety nine makes a difference. You know that. Everybody knows it if it's really? twenty five ninety nine, it's so much cheaper than twenty six hundred dollars. Okay, that's true. It's absolutely okay. true. So, <laughs> first question that's not a TikTok question. All right. What do you consider the best finger picking style guitar under twenty five hundred? Mm. There's a few options here. Mm -hmm. Well, if you go twenty five ninety nine. Mm. Yeah, you're 25. <laughs> um, I'm just kidding. That is true. Uh, I think, if I remember right, a Vintage 2 falls right in that price point. Uh, I like the OM. I think so. And we even have that one double O in there right now mm -hmm. that is mm -hmm. fantastic. Yeah, that one rules. Um, let's see, what else is a great finger style thing? That's in the twenty five. Is there any Bedells that are in the twenty five range? You're yeah. kind of. Is there a Bedell? I want to say there is. Is there a Bedell that's? The OMs I think are sitting around three What's a right now. House? Coffee House I think is thirty four. No, they're still yeah. Those are all definitely three. I yeah. Think. I don't think Bedells fall in that price range. Of course, yeah. finger style wise, Eastman stuff has. Uh, I got. I got to tell you, I think one of the nice finger picking style guitars, if you're really on a budget is the E2 OM, 
cedar top. Mm -hmm. uh, someone was asking about that. They were asking, you know, what's better, uh, uh, E1 or uh, E10 uh, OM? And I'm like, the E2, that's the best one in the, my opinion. The specials, the E1 specials with the Those are great too. Cipelles. Oh yeah, Fantastic. absolutely. How about the, the CE? Mm -hmm. That's even nice too, because mm -hmm. that, uh, again, was a, I think, a long scale uh, OMCE with uh, Dana Bourgeois. And that's well under 2500 yeah, yeah. Well if, you're, under. if you're wanting to push it i mean even just uh varnish eastman anything is awesome in my opinion mm -hmm. and there are definitely body styles that fit that what is it the artista pro uh from breed love that's the all solid uh yeah. one i like that one a lot too especially in that concertina size that one's really nice too indian rosewood uh cedar top i believe uh, i guess the question is what is the best what would you pick if the fork falls under the 25, that's probably what I would. Pick. I did. I did look up that the you said vintage two. Yeah. Om, it is exactly 24.99. That's what I pick then. So it's right there. Yeah, those are spectacular. Um, I played E20 Double O, and that's a really really good finger picking oh, one. Oh yeah. That's also a great. I don't option. know why I just didn't like check this out. <laughs> <laughs> I kept uh, my. Capo. In fact, you should probably keep this one because this one's radius for that mm. guitar right over there. And that way we don't get confused with it. There you go. And that one you can have. All right, this was another good question that was put in by Bill. In the long run, will Torrified Top Guitars or Natural Tops hold better value when it comes to the boutique market? Um, if you're purely going after the boutique market, Torrified Tops, 100%. This is a technology that has been around way longer than what the guitar industry thinks it has. This that technology, uh, it's not really te technology, really, in, uh, except for the fact they had to come up with special kilns to do it. Torfied wood has been being, has been being built for probably the last 25 years um, or more, but the guitar world's just kind of eating it up and almost every company now is moving towards it. Eastman has actually did, uh, discontinued uh, most of their non-Torrified uh, top guitars because everybody wants it and especially if you're talking boutique world That's one of those extras like if you're gonna spend the extra it's like yeah, of course I want to have it torrified That's you know pretty much a given. I, I think we see that a lot with the Boucher's um, You know that we get the masters and they sell from time to time But when we get somebody that wants a master grade top, they also want it to be torrified mm -hmm. So that's what we we probably see I would I would always say in the market Definitely there. And then when it comes down to it, it's just what you like. Uh, they're both great sounding guitars. I tend to prefer the Torrified Top stuff. I think it gives it a warmer punch and a little bit more of a vintage feel. It's just it's quicker to um, break in when you have that Torrified Top a lot of the time. So you, yep. get a, you get a more aged sound out of it by doing that. Absolutely. What was the first guitar you guys learned on? Um, an Alvarez. A very budgetary Alvarez, and I didn't know anything about anything, so I think it had medium gauge strings on, and the neck was very bowed, and the strings were really high on it, and I went to my guitar teacher, and I was like, my fingers hurt all the time, and he's like, well, that's because your guitar isn't very great, so, <laughs> uh, and I got a classical. And By the way, I did easier. not know that budgetary was a word, so I'm glad to hear it. Budgetary is a word. Budgetary right. constraints. All right, I guess that's that's true. I'm an idiot. I don't know if she used it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I did. I'm one of those weird uh, people that actually started out with a really great guitar. Well, I mean, not like a super great guitar, but I, people on this uh, forum and stuff will probably go, oh, what a cheese ball. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was much better word than what they're actually going to use. Um, Certified cheese ball. My, da <laughs> my dad had a 1974 D28, um, and he had it, and it had been scalloped by him, by hand. He actually went in there with a finger planer and scalloped the braces because he read that's what you should do. And uh, that was a guitar that was sitting around. I wasn't supposed to play it. I've told this story a lot of times. Um, and at, I would kind of sneak in there and play it, even though I was supposed to be playing fiddle or violin at the time. And the problem was I was like 12 years old, so like this is as far as I could reach. And he had a very, very sharp tortoiseshell pick, and this is how I learned to play right here. And that's how he found out I was learning oh. to play on his guitar, <laughs> because there were really good little gouges that were right in here. 
And that's how I learned to play guitar. So yeah, there you go. That's oh man. Sweet. Okay, the next question was, which tone would you would you reckon will be the next to go the same way that Brazilian rosewood has gotten? Madagascar rosewood. Absolutely. Madagascar rosewood. It's yeah. already almost there. Do you guys do um, finger tapping like Andy McKee? Oh, I wish. Give it a try. <laughs> Pretty good. So avant-garde. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that was great. Next, I don't even know what that means. That was a word. The next on that, which two or three guitars in the shop would be best for that style? Um, Boy, that's a good question. Probably Breedlove, you know. Uh, what's his name? Plays a Breedlove. Uh, Andy came in and played one. I, yeah. He actually came into the shop, uh, I guess it was almost a year ago, mm -hmm. was hanging out. Yeah. Uh, he played the new Bedells, and he played the new, uh, a couple of the Breedloves. We had a Brazilian, I think, with a cedar top. Uh, also liked that one a I whole bunch. I want to say he was using a McPherson as yeah. well. He was trying to. So I was gonna try say, if you're really McPherson. wanting something that's great for that, because it's all the sustain in the world, I would probably work great. Mm -hmm. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, he was cool to t hang out with. By the way, he had his big baggy pants on the whole thing. It was like Kinda he had a karate those. kick John. <laughs> <laughs> he probably wanted to. I don't even blame him. Kick to the face. <laughs> Roundhouse <laughs> kick to the face. <laughs> This oh. is specific. What do you think about Osage Orange as a toad wood? I've heard it. Okay. Did we have I, a... Um, you, what's his name? The squirrel hunter guy yeah. built one in Osage mm -hmm. Orange. You know who else is building one right now? I think he just finished one not long ago is uh, Gallagher. Gallagher? Really? Oh, Gallagher. yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't they do one uh, in that Tennessee model, right? Yeah, uh, that's a local a Tennessee, Tennessee model, yeah. uh, when they were building that. Uh, I got to say, I, I played a couple of them. It wasn't my cup of tea. I don't think it was bad. It just wasn't my thing. I think eventually that might be a good one, but you may have to just figure out how to m make the guitar sound a little bit better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some different bracing and stuff. But I think it's really, mm -hmm. really cool to be using local wood like that because there's Osage oranges around everywhere. Yeah. And it's an interesting wood type. So. Could be the next, uh, what, Sapele or something? Walnut? Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, next one, what Eastman model would you suggest for street playing? Not worried about weather, but decent volume, question mark? Hmm. Well, the weather variation throws a whole nother run into it, because all these guitars that they build are a little bit on the boutique, boutique side, so they're building a lighter build um, as far as bracing and all that kind of stuff. I guess a PCH? Yeah. A PCH mm -hmm. 3, maybe? Um, that has a full gloss finish to it, because that would protect uh, against the weather and that kind of stuff. So I would say an Eastman PCH three. That's a yeah. DAC. That's a pretty durable guitar. I would yeah. say a P I would say a PCH has better than just decent volume. Like a PCH, mm -hmm. if that's what you're asking, with decent volume, yeah, a PCH is like, those are fine. They're still yeah. hand built guitars. Yeah. They're hand voiced. Uh, the whole thing, uh, and laminate sides and back. By the way, PCH Pacific Coast Highway series uh, from yeah. Eastman is their most inexpensive. It does still have a solid top. Uh, that is scallop braced and voiced, uh, but has a laminate sides and back. The PCH3 is a full gloss finish, so again, ha kind of gives it more protection and gives it a little bit uh, better for the weather deal. If it wasn't for that, I would have said E1 all the way. Mm -hmm. If you weren't worried about the weather, just want a great sounding guitar that just sounds awesome, has tons of volume, tons of uh, tone, and is inexpensive, and you just don't worry about it as much, you still have to take care of it. Um, but you're just not going to freak out if something gets bumped or beat up into it. That would be the E1 all the way OM yeah. or, or Dread. That is a fantastic guitar. Mm -hmm. Is the E40D TC available in Sunburst? We have gotten them in in Sunburst. They have not. We have not seen an E40D TC in Sunburst. True. Yet. Not a thermo cured, actually. That's They're switching true. those over, and I'm waiting. Yes, they are going to be coming, as, as all of these. They should be showing up soon. Um, we're just waiting for all that stuff yeah. to start making its way into the to the shop. So, uh, yes, it is there. You can special order one and have one be the first on your block to have them because I know I've put those orders in, gosh, a year and a half ago. So mm -hmm. I know I'm at the very top of the list for those to be uh, allocated. So there you go. And then what do you think about Cocobolo? Cocobolo is another... Positively. Yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful yeah. wood. Oh, yeah. um, tends to be a little bit thicker sounding than most of the rosewoods, mm -hmm. um, but it is in that vein, I would say. And again, depending on the manufacturer that uses it, the one thing I will tell you about Cocobolo, 
be particular about who is building your guitar because if they build it with the same thicknesses as they do their standard rosewoods it's going to come out very blah it's not going to have because there's so much oil in that wood it doesn't yeah. have as much resonance it just you have to build it different than you would build some of your other tone wood guitars just because of how just thick it is by way of that. And, and I'm serious about that. If watch any videos of guitar builders that use it. When they use their sanders, their sandpaper gets all gummed up. It just turns into like gel almost because uh, mm. the sand has so much, uh, or the wood, uh, yeah, sawdust has so much oil in it, it just gums up the whole works. And, and it's actually toxic. The uh, sawdust from Coco Bolo is toxic. Oh gosh. So do not breathe it, guys. Build it carefully. Guitar. Do not lick your Coco Bolo <laughs> guitars. Coco Bolo. <laughs> but it looks absolutely gorgeous if it's well done. They are great sounding guitars as well. Yeah, I was gonna bring so. up the company uh, Bedell. Yeah. Tom Bedell, that's, they, they're To me, they build the Bolo best ones. sounding yeah. Coco Bolo guitars yeah. uh, out there. We have a, an OM and a parlor in right now. Awesome. That's a good point, Alex. We should we should play Liz, some things. Play that bourgeois guitar. Don't or... mind if I do. <laughs> Ooh, I love this guitar. And that's correct, bluegrass picker. Tell the people to like and subscribe if they like what they're seeing. I agree. I well, agree. what should we play? <laughs> that's a good question. Um, I'm, I'm up for what. Is there any other recommendations? Somebody on TikTok said play "Smells Like Teen Spirit" by Nirvana. She did it the... once. Uh, I know you did it. Well, I, I can play Come As You Are. Okay. Should we do that one? Uh, I'll fake my way through it. You can. Do I know this one? I can honestly oh say that is the first time that I have ever attempted any Nirvana On song. TikTok, some folks are loving it. Somebody said grunge on acoustic. Love it. Grunge yes. on acoustic. Yes, it's we awesome. We are not rocking enough flannel. And that. just wait until we do Misfits. Acoustic Misfit <laughs> songs, are you kidding me? Guys, I gotta tell you, uh, those who are seeing uh, Shop Talk for the first time, or Liz for the first time, there's nobody that is a bigger Doyle fan than Liz. Uh, we, uh, I didn't know who Doyle was. We should and get him on the show sometime. We should. I had absolutely no idea who this was. Doyle Wolfgang von Frankenstein. Of course it is. 
pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Can we let's let's talk. Let's talk for two seconds. All right. Do you actually like it? I've never seen music? anybody could can spank a guitar like he can and make yeah, it sound that's like exactly that. It's right. very right. impressive. Yes. It's the talent that you uh, love so much of this guy. She'll probably never admit to it, but she stated to me that his music isn't that good. <laughs> it's not true. I think it's very, very good. Uh, I'm very impressed by it. By the way, by the way, uh, when she did, uh, we were just telling the story. We went to the NAMM show, what was that, four years ago probably? Five years ago? It's a very long time ago. I didn't have gray hair then. <laughs> All of a sudden she's telling me, Doyle's here, Doyle's here. I'm like, okay, I have no idea who this is, but I've heard that this is, is, he's here. All right, so all right. So we start looking around and he's doing signings all over the place. She gets in one of the lines and they shut it down shut before it down. she could get yeah. there. And she's so mad. I thought so that was mad. my last chance. She was say. so mad. So then I'm going around and I'm in a totally different building. She's in another side of the NAMM show. And then I just sent her this picture that I had just got with myself and Doyle. <laughs> I don't know who this guy is. I just know Liz is going to freak out. So I got it signed to Liz, took my picture next to her, or next to him, and sent it to her in a text form. She was so mad. And then after that, I told her exactly where he was. And seriously, it's almost probably three quarters of a mile away from where she was from where I was at. And she ran with all she had. She showed up all sweaty. And I forget, what was the line you, you told him when you got there? Said, I love uh, I love all of your music. I said, I love all your music, Doyle. And he's like, do you like the Misfits or do you like Doyle? And I was like, I like Doyle. And he's really <laughs> tall. So I got to look up at him when I was saying this. And, and, oh and then afterwards she goes to me, I actually just really like the Misfits. <laughs> It's not true. I like Doyle too. So Doyle, him. he's watching. If you're watching this. right now, Doyle, if you're watching this, I like your music as well. Oh my gosh! I just really like the Misfits. <laughs> Definitely not. Jackson says, "Hey, what's the best tone wood for cool Nirvana and Misfits cover?" <laughs> I believe that is called uh, plywood of pine. I believe that is the best tone wood. For and then, that. is Any John going good. to start dressing like Doyle? Yes. <laughs> Immediately. God. Um, the little brain, the greasy <laughs> brain that just falls down the side of your face. Man, oh, that would look cool. Oh, yeah, it would. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I, I, like, I like the guys like 6'2", at least, 6'4", and had to wear platform shoes on top of that. I just thought that was so... He chews bubble gum <laughs> when he plays guitar, too, and he blows oh, okay. bubbles. Okay. And so he's just wailing I mean, on it and if I was, bubbles. If I was Doyle Von huh. Frankenstein or whatever it is, I would also enjoy blowing bubbles with my oh, bubble yum. That's so cool. <laughs> that's so cool. Jason, you have nothing to say to this? Come on, you got to add to this. Nothing? It's been said. <laughs> <laughs> Hi from Oregon. What about Dust in the Wind? Can you sing that, Dust in the Wind? We have a ton of requests on TikTok also. Uh, many Springsteen covers. That I don't know request. any Springsteen. I really uh, like the Request for Nebraska. Dancing in the Dark. Uh, dancing in the... I know of these songs. Come on, these are great options. I thought Liz is going to know all these. None of them? <laughs> I, know, uh, I know old 30s covers. That's about it. <laughs> 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 I know anything by... Come on, TikTok and, and yeah. YouTube and Facebook. You guys like Al Boley? Because I, I like Al Boley a lot. You can play Dust in a Baggie, right, Liz? What's Dust in a Baggie? By Billy Strings. Billy Strings. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's talking about how he got busted and uh, is going to jail because he got caught with dust in a baggie. Oh, you know that what naughty about? boy. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, question. we got the request for Jackson by Johnny Cash. You guys that one? I can go into Jackson. Chase, are you okay? <laughs> I thought we lost Jason for a second. He was okay. No. All right. That's a good request. Oh, uh, we got made in a beaver. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, put it up there. I don't care. I, I'm Do brave. It. What key are we in? We're in E. Sue. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got 
got married in a fever Hotter than a pepper sprout We've been talking about Jackson Ever since the fire went out I'm going to Jackson I'm going to mess around Yes, I'm going to Jackson Look out, Jackson Town Your turn I don't know this Sing it well, the best June Carter ever. <laughs> well, when I breeze into that city, people gonna jump steep and bow. All them women gonna make me teach them what they don't know how, how I'm going to Jackson. There's my coat. Cause I'm going to Jackson. Hotter than a pepper sprout We've been talking about Jackson Ever since the fire went out I'm going to Jackson And that's a fact Yeah, I'm going to Jackson And I ain't never coming back Did you like my Johnny Cash shirt? That was, was that great. your favorite Hinkley? John, oh my God, John, you just missed it. Johnny Cash was just that What? Here. Are you kidding me? Was he hurt? Yeah, June with him. <laughs> <laughs> was he hurt? Okay. We have some other stuff. We oh my God. We request. I can't believe we just did that. Liz, Liz, we just did a Johnny and June. Very good. That was great. Yeah, that was very, very good. That was great, guys. TikTok loved it. You guys better donate something for that. Please. <laughs> Come on. Oh, my gosh. All Man, right. this is like the most eclectic uh, uh, request line that we have had yet. We got John Mayer, uh, Jerry yes. Reed. I love Jerry Reed. Jay, you want to sing some Jerry Reed? You can do it. No. No. <laughs> He's not feeling it today. <laughs> um, Mazzy Star. <coughs> Uh, I sang that for one of my very, very good friend's weddings while uh, the bride was coming up. Okay. And I was so overwhelmed by emotions because it was so sweet that he was getting married that I forgot all the lyrics and I just um, fumbled through the whole thing. Aww. And I was so embarrassed, Aww. but the good news is that my good friend Jason does not remember a blip of me singing that, so he'll never know how <laughs> horrible. I covered that song. So yes, I do know that song, but I don't remember. You just covered all over it. You just I covered all over it. <laughs> yeah. All right, That's Liz. great. That's pretty good. That's my All right, what do we got here? City of New Orleans. Run. Jimmy Rogers. Somebody said on TikTok that you have a great uh, right hand technique. So there's that. Shout out, John. Uh, and then they have a request for whiskey before breakfast. They say, I've been having trouble with the B part. 
I can play that in a minor key. Let's give you a reference. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gee. I see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Probably do it in G. I'll try it. The city of New Orleans. We'll try it. I'm I'm brave. Hey, that's you, Hinkley. That's you, the city of New Orleans. Sorry, she was getting text messages. They were important Slack messages. They actually probably were. I wasn't meaning that to be rude. I apologize. <laughs> it came off as rude. I was not. I was not paying attention. That was from the vet. Her dog just died. How do you feel? Alright, I'll try it. One, two, three.
last pass is the first time I found that uh, F in there, so. Oh, yeah, it's a good one. Uh, it's a good tune. Sorry I screwed it and <laughs> butchered all the lyrics. That's a hard one to fit in a lot of those words. The phrasing doesn't quite make sense if you're just reading it. Rhonda just cut yeah. that one. That's pretty good. Rhonda did just cut this. And you know what? She actually showed us uh, it here. She showed up here in the studio one day. She's, She's like, hey, you want to hear something? And it was the early mixes of that song. She had just done a cut of it. It's really, really good. So if you haven't heard that yet, Rhonda Vincent just cut the city of New Orleans. It's really, really good. Dude, that was one of the songs that she played on the Opry whenever we were literally there with the Bill I think she debuted it on the Opry that did night. She really? I think that was the night she I was debuting it. Filming it. I think that's actually in the live stream that we did while we were there. I think that's the song that we did. Yeah, Either way, I know I filmed too. it. Yeah. Aaron McDerris did an awesome break, and he had, she had, yeah. she had uh, what's his name, filling in on banjo, uh, oh, Stewart? Yeah, Ron Stewart, and Ron was trying to figure out the break that he did. It was, it was really, really good. McDerris did a great Aaron job. A, Aaron's so good that even Ron Stewart's like, that's awesome. It was really How good. How do I do that? Yeah. Aaron's, Aaron's good at banjo, guys. He, he's pretty good he's pretty at good. it. He's pretty good. pretty good at the he's banjos. He's pretty good at banjo, man. We should probably do uh, one more guitar. I'm going to switch to another guitar. Yeah, absolutely. You should definitely show off that guitar. Um, All right. I'm going to do it. Anyway, you have another song the, that you would like us to do, uh, Liz? We're getting some really cool requests, yeah. too. Whiskey Lullaby. Oh, I love that tune. Do you know that one? I probably do. I mean, I've heard it. I've heard it enough. But yeah. You know, the problem is, like, Brad Paisley sings it in, like, this, I Whiskey Lullaby. <laughs> just like that. He sounds just like that. <laughs> Not quite that. It's, it's, it's just like literally. Ah. This is a uh, this is an interesting question, real quick. What's the worst song lyrics you've ever tried to sing, other than "Windmills of My Mind"? Are they meaning like maybe most difficult? I don't know. I don't know "Windmills of My Mind." Do I know that song? I like. Here's the deal. That title I, sounds really familiar. This is right. Like. I know like a million and a half songs that I've heard and kind of have a rough idea of them, but I don't know any of them. Mm, mm. It's really weird, right? Mm -hmm. I know of them. So I, sometimes like windmills of my mind, there's a good probability that I know what that song is, but right now I cannot place it in any way, shape, or form. That sounds so familiar. I had to sing uh, Welcome to the Jungle for a wedding one time. <laughs> <laughs> of thing. course you did. So I, I love would say that's... That's the worst. No wedding. By the no way, wedding. obviously, Liz gets way more wedding gigs than I do. Because this is, uh, I can't, I, I can only think of like one wedding that I've ever been oh, brother. sing at. So I used to have to do so many weddings. And that yeah. one, that was a sweet wedding. But I was very upset that the rest of my band had agreed to do that song. What was so, it? Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the jungle. jungle. Welcome to the Jungle. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I didn't know how to do it because we were doing it on Did acoustic you guys do the instruments. Insanely, isn't that like an insanely long intro? <laughs> oh, we botched it, and uh, yeah. and I I was sighing really heavily through the whole thing, and I went like, sha na 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 knees knees knees. Oh, I was mad. Knees knees knees. I'm gonna make you bleed. <laughs> Belladonna was quite the uh, wedding band. I think I did two weddings with you guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love that. Oh, yeah. I just never that makes me very, very happy. We were hey. there for the bacon wrap dates. Hey, guys, uh, a couple things that came in that Jeremy's not here to talk about. He didn't show up. He, by the way, Jeremy is dead uh, <laughs> at, at a uh, pumpkin okay. patch somewhere. Uh, he just fell in the middle of the thing and just propped <laughs> him up and he's in his scarecrow. <laughs> now he's in his scarecrow. That's weird. Until it rots. And oh my god. <laughs> 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 ay, ay, ay. I love, I love so Liz's warm, reaction to that. That was so great. Anyway, we were supposed to talk about mandolins today. We have our new Buis mandolin, uh, spelled Buis, uh, but it is here and I uh, should be hitting the website very shortly, I believe. Is that correct? I believe so. Okay. Believe so. Most likely. And then I just got notification literally three minutes before we went live here. Bourgeois M5 Fs, the F style mandolins. I have five of them on their way here. Five. Uh, so uh, I know I've already got, I think, two of them pre sold. So if you're looking for an M5 F, I've got some coming and they will only be here for a very, very short amount of time. In fact, I believe, Carol, if you're on there, I think one of them is going to you. 
Yeah, I may be wrong on that, uh, but I thought I saw something about that. Carol does so. tend to ask every single time, so I know that uh, she's been keeping an eye out on them, yeah. if anything. So I believe we got, uh, I know we got five, so that leaves, I think, three more uh, that'll be available. So we have that. Um, just got this in. This is from Gallagher Guitars. This is the Josh Wrinkle signature. We did a video about this. One of the coolest looking bursts. I like the color. Adirondack spruce top, mahogany back and sides. They did the purfling very similar to Thompson, uh, which kind of makes sense because at one point Josh was a Thompson uh, player, so he probably pushed that over to the Gallagher, which I actually think it looks Connecting, 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 Damn, connecting, connecting. Quiet. Oh my gosh, sorry, we're back. We were quiet. By shovel, I like nobody's that. deaf. I promise nobody's deaf. We are we are we're, back. Are we back? <laughs> yes. Are we back? Best comment of the day goes to shovel. Damn, y'all's <laughs> quiet. <laughs> oh so my god, that's great. Oh, I was not we killed the attention. sound guy. <laughs> Guess what? Sound guy also died, but Jeremy is really oh, weird. Oh gosh. Anyway. Both scarecrows. <laughs> What were we sprouting. discussing? Oh, you shaved your head, Liz. Shaved my head, <laughs> so I was wearing a lot of hats because I looked ridiculous with a shaved head. <laughs> and so I had a I had a whole hat game for a while. That's great. Uh, I, but I, since I've known Liz, which I think, what are we going on, like 10 years now that I've known you? Probably. Roughly about that? I mean, mm -hmm. since you started working here, it's been about seven, six? Something like six that. Six or seven years? Um, there's been phases to... Uh, to Liz's fashion, and there was a blazer area. Like oh, I'm the, back in the blazer are game. Are you back in the blazer yeah, game? Yeah, it's just, it's the fall game. Oh. There's no yeah. bowl ties lately, I don't know what that is. <laughs> uh, she's <laughs> wearing one today, <laughs> by golly. I yeah. mean, tucked in, which is really strange, but whatever. Um, <laughs> there's a denim one, which denim on denim has I become her latest. <laughs> denim on, on denim yeah. is yeah. her new thing right now. By the way, I believe there's a song called Denim on Denim. It really should believe, be yeah. if there's not. Yeah. Denim, anyway. denim, denim. <laughs> <laughs> That's really, really funny. So, anyway. um, yeah, uh, so real quick, I'm in yes. the denim game these days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yes, we are taking requests. Uh, somebody asked for Black Mountain Rag on TikTok. Can you do that one? It's uh, just uh, C, F, and G. I can do that. All right, follow with that.
has so many notes in that. Oh. That's Doc right there. Good job, by, guys. by the way, I don't know how much you guys are paying attention to. Uh, Janelle starts creeping her way <laughs> from the other office building into Jason's studio, where uh, Hinkley is right now, chasing a cricket with a cup, and then it starts working its way <laughs> into the studio in here, to which Hinkley then starts to chase it without a cup and <laughs> smashes it dead. I mean, try, like tried to step on it four different times it's, and missed. It's an intruder. <laughs> it's an intruder. <laughs> Can I just say real quick that... Wait, was that in there with you? Yeah, it was in here and then it hopped under the door. Real quick, it, it was in here earlier and I just ignored it because I didn't care enough to <laughs> deal with it. But now, <laughs> dead. That was no it. Crickets. <laughs> you, the weird part is, that's my conscience right there. You have just killed really? my conscience. That was Very Jiminy. Buddy Holly is, as Alex says. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was Jiminy. Oh, gosh. His, his, his band name was the, the Crickets. But you know why they were called the Crickets? You don't know why they were called the Crickets? Totally true story. They were cutting their first album in a garage, recording it, and in there was the sound of a cricket in the back end, and you could hear it on the recording, and thus the name Buddy Holly Aww. and the Crickets. Well, there we go. On to... <laughs> I'm glad we were able facts. to put that out there for everybody. Guys, uh, we have so many questions, and we still have some comments of the week. And a good. question. Get, get going on them. We're running out of time. Okay, let's let's try and get through these all. So, Liz, uh, John Washburn wants to come in on Friday. Do you need an appointment to look at a guitar? This guitar? Good question. You don't need to have, have an appointment. Liz look at, let's see, that's, uh, to that's have what Liz that look at the guitar. Look at it? Yeah, I think she needs to. Oh, to look at a guitar, not yeah. this guitar. Um, you don't necessarily have to have an, have an appointment, but <coughs> I would recommend you bringing it in earlier in the day so I yeah. can talk with you about it, and then we can figure it out. Yeah, Liz is uh, of the uh, she just she's out of here by like ten o'clock in the morning. She comes in at nine and leaves by <laughs> ten. <laughs> Heck yeah! All right, um, where did you find your end pin tip, and how much was it? My end pin. An end pin. End pin tip. What? I'm not sure what they're talking about. They're talking about the video that you just put out where you're drilling it out. Oh, is it like the drill bit for it? I think they might be talking about the reamer. Mm. If we could oh, have some clarification. Yeah, clarification would be nice. We can definitely get back to that, yeah. yeah. So, real quick, for the question of the day, just going to pop that up real quick. Now that uh, it's over, the show's over, we're going to get the question of the yeah, day. Yeah, we're going to get it nice and early into the show for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> How would you build a band with current bluegrass performers? Liz, I'm sure you have many this opinions gonna be great. about this. I cannot wait for this. She's actually getting more bluegrass cred lately. No. I know exactly who she's going to put. There's going to be three people in her band. I'm not oh, okay. certain of it. So with current current people in the bluegrass realm, how yeah, would I build like it? Yeah, it's kind of like a little game. You know, build your dream band. Think about some performers that are currently... So we're not doing, we're not doing dead or alive. they got to be... A live, a live bluegrass That's the players. Twist that we're doing, yeah. Currently touring, yeah. Oh, Currently, brother, making music. I guess would be probably the best thing to say, or or touring. Sure, I mean just this people could get that us in are a lot of trouble. This could hurt a lot of feelings. Could, yeah, well, hmm. everybody cares what my opinion is. <laughs> Do they actually? <laughs> All right, go for it, Jay. You got a good, good idea? Nah, I don't know. No Pekilni on banjo. Mm. Okay. Yeah. It could also, uh, I got one other that I love also. Uh, who is it? Uh, I can, I'll, I'll come back to that one. Um, it would probably have um, uh, Jake Workman on guitar. This is pretty cool. Ba Barry Bales on bass, of course. Jason's going to agree with that. Um, Fiddle Stewart, uh, Duncan. Uh, mandolin. Who would I put in a mandolin spot? We haven't even discussed vocals at all, so I'm Good just going to go with instrumentally. Really uh, depends on the type mandolin. of music you want to play. I mean, Who do I want to have on my mandolin? Sierra. Sierra Hall. That's yeah. probably mm -hmm. no. That would probably be a good option for me. I don't have to have Sierra. Okay, Alex said I have to have uh, Sierra. Now I won't. Oh. You're not going to do that <laughs> to me. You you just you just blew it, right there. Uh, Sam Bush. It's going to be Sam Bush on the mandolin. I'm Solid. Done. There's I'm plenty done. of great options. I'm done. Anybody it's just else? Just your all stars. I, I can't pick a banjo player because you got. Jason Davis, Ron Stewart, Ron Block. Ron Block. I forgot about Ron Block. He also needs to play guitar, he can sub guitar and banjo. So, 
has depending to. on the song. See, that's my, you, my, you didn't say how many people are in the band, so I want my bench. I got mm. you know on the bench. I got Ron on Stewart, the bench, yeah. Jason Davis. Fantasy you gotta have, football. You gotta it's have like Sierra's fantasy. Husband. Yeah, exactly. It's like fantasy. You gotta have Sierra's football. husband because he can play everything. Oh my God! Play dobro, fiddle. That's Andrew, a, that's your your yeah, utility man for when you have an injury. The flex. Yeah, the when you have flex. your flex yeah, player, so or just just playing your injured reserve. I mean, he's yeah. like covering all of them. Yeah. He's doing them all. All right, Justin Moses. Yeah, you gotta be Justice. But if I don't have yeah. Sierra, it says you can't have Justin Moses. <laughs> No, that's not true. They Barry's tour probably separately. the most bluegrassy player you can get, so you get that. But if you want to reach out there, you got to get Victor in there. Victor Krause, Krause. that's a good option too. Yeah, this is a silly question. Basically, I uh, want all of my favorites, all, and I will make a compilation album of that entire series oh, wow. of band. You like That'd, that? Yeah, it'd be good. Yeah, Liz, your turn. Um, <laughs> Alan Monday on banjo. That's the right answer. <laughs> Corey Kirkland on. Uh, guitar. Heck yes. Uh, um, Gillian Welsh for vocals. It's gonna be a new nobody age. Cared about, nobody cared about vocals. We were just talking about instruments. Oh, um, I'm just kidding. And, uh, it would just be a trio. You're gonna put Jeremy just be a trio. On <laughs> be a really unique sounding one. And I like it. I love would it. you be on mandolin? Yes. Or fiddle? That's, yeah, there I would go. be on fiddle. There you go. And it would be a very new age sound. Can I do uh, this? <coughs> Pinkley's on bass. There we go. So, pretty good band. <laughs> that is essentially my bluegrass heart, by the way. Yes, yeah. Uh, we all agree. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Nice. Except for Jake Workman. I had Jake. Jake wasn't on there. Yeah, you can't, you can't leave Mark Schatz. See, that's, he's on my bench, too. Okay. <laughs> Male Schatz. <laughs> you got Chris <laughs> Neely. Victor. God. Perhaps. I mean, all right. Okay. I guess Victor could do all that stuff that Schatz could do, too. Yeah. So, more questions that we've got Bring in. On. I saw a bridge pins. Yep. What's your bridge pins should I use for Eastman to get a vintage sound? I'll be honest with you. Bridge pins do make a difference. It's not enough to go. That's going to make a vintage sound. It's just a slight difference. I love switching out. Like um, the E40s now are putting bone bridge pins in there. I do think that gains you a little bit more sustain, uh, a little bit overall, more sustain, and maybe a little bit of volume. But these are pretty minute tweaks. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, Man, to get a more vintage sound, play it. I saw. You know what I would say? If you want <clears throat> your guitar to sound more vintage and more, more old, <clears throat> excuse me, broke in. Dr. Herringbone Tone Travelers. I'm seeing a lot of uh, in just in the shop. We're seeing a difference using those. We do it inside with the mandolins uh, when we're getting ready to do some demos. Those do open those instruments up quite a bit and make them sound better. So I definitely recommend that is a really good uh, place to put some money into. Maybe Monel strings? That will definitely give you a more vintage sound mm -hmm. a little bit. I'm real curious to try these new uh, Cobalt, Cobalt strings, what are they calling? Co uh, Co something or other. Uh, Martin's just coming out with them. It's just kind of a little bit more bronzy than uh, Monel, which I want to try them. So I've got a set, I just haven't put them on yet. I'm dying to see what they're like. So Cool. Yeah. So uh, first comment of the week, you guys can't see it, but the folks at home should be able to see it. Is mandolin easier to learn than guitar? No! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and moving on. <laughs> and moving on. I have been asked this question a lot uh, every time, every other day in the shop. You guys have probably, you've probably heard it a billion times too. What's the easiest instrument to learn? My pat answer is none of them. You're asking the wrong question. If you're coming in to play music and you're asking what is the easiest one to learn, you're doing the wrong thing. They're all difficult in their own way, and the only way you're going to get past the difficult parts of learning to play any musical instrument is to love it and want to do it so badly that you're going to push forward to become a better player. So if you love guitar, play guitar. If you love banjo or mandolin or whatever, ukulele, that's the instrument you need to worry about. Do not come into music and expect success by going, that's the easiest instrument to play because they all have their own ones, and I, I also explain it, and I think there's a learning curve, and I think each one of them has a deal where you can start playing music, some of them, like guitars, got a pretty quick little curve ukulele. until you're playing, yeah, ukulele, where you can play music, but then to get to that ne next level is really hard, so it's a very steep curve from that point on, uh, whereas violins just, all technique on the front end and then it kind of grows and so to me I almost feel like if you were to make it this, bar, this big line graph somewhere there's a point where all of them meet in the end it's just a different curve to get to them mm -hmm. um, to get to a level 
of you know proficiency. We should make that graph. We should. That's interesting. I like <laughs> the that. The John Chapman uh, <laughs> line graph of <laughs> what instrument should you play? Uh, uh, if, somebody, somebody on TikTok said, "True, you have to be addicted to excel." You do, kind of. You got to be just be addicted to it. Yeah. That, this is. I go at this with my daughter a lot. She said that fifteen-year-old thing. She's extremely talented, and it just frustrates the fire out of me. She can understand music. She gets it. I I totally busted her the other day. She's in band, and I'm watching her. She's never played piano, and they just. She six weeks ago they told her she's going to be in the front line of the marching band playing synthesizer. I'm like. What are you talking about? You don't play piano. And she can read music all right and all that stuff. And so she's figuring out how to do this. And here's the deal. She doesn't practice. She doesn't want to do that, put the work into it to do that. And I get it. I was also a lazy person. But what frustrates me so bad is I know she has the talent to make that stuff happen. And if she really... I called her out the other day. I watched her do the band competitions. And I know I can watch her. She listens to the music. She can figure it out. She's not spending the time to learn it, but she can hear it and she can kind of get to points where she recognizes and, and gets that to happen. Good for her, but boy, if she put in the work, imagine how great she could become. And that's, that's a little frustrating that's for me. That's a lot of, that's literally everybody at some point though. That's playing mm -hmm. She's 15 you know, years old. It's everybody. It's again, that, yeah. I do not get on her. Again, uh, this is another question that's always asked. How do you get my kids to play? Let them figure it out. Don't force them. And that's where I'm at with with them. They're both my, all three of my kids are very very talented. Uh, the two newest ones, I don't know how well they do to music. They love it. They sing it. I don't know how talented they are yet. But uh, my three older kids, all three very very talented and recognized. But I'm not going to push them. When they decide they want to play music, they'll go for it. And that's my opinion. So, do you have anything to add to that? I just got off of soapbox. So your turn. Oh. Um, mm -hmm. I think that your points were very good on that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite? Well, preferred prof professional kazoo player. Uh, I believe uh, they... Shovel, you have to look up the... Uh, <laughs> the electric the kazoo. Electrified kazoo. Yeah, you get got that. pickup built in. Yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. You <laughs> don't use don't a microphone. Get, yeah, get the electric, <laughs> get the electric kazoo. Yeah, exactly. Spring for an extra 10 bucks, buddy. <laughs> I believe uh, found on Amazon or wherever you online shop. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Uh, do you know if Gibson, I'm oh, sorry, you were highlighting one, but I'll do this one since I started. Do you know okay. if Gibson makes their own PB strings? I think he means peanut butter strings. Um, no, he means That's phosphor bronze strings. Uh, they are only thing that sounds right on my J185. I hate to disappoint you. I do not believe Gibson is making strings. They farm those out. And I believe D'Addario is the company that they do that with. There, last I checked, there's only four major manufacturers. There's some new ones now. You got String Joy doing small ones, but uh, the main manufacturers. Elixir does not make their own strings. I'm sorry to tell you guys this. Ernie Ball does not make. Well, maybe For they do. Period in the early um, 2000s, there was only two people. Yeah. Making strings that would be GHS and D'Addario. Martin does have their own factory. How many I they did then though. No, they didn't. Um, but then they did buy one uh, in the like late 80s, early 90s, and started building uh, Darko and Martin there. Uh, D'Addario is still the strong one, and GHS. Most of your D'Angelico strings, those are built by GHS. Um, a lot of strings are built by other people, just put their tags. And again, uh, I hate to disappoint a lot of you guys who are big giant Elixir fans, but Elixir does not make strings. They just make a coating that they put on strings. So that is fact. So. Well then, debunked. I don't know. So I don't know about Gibson. I, I honestly, but I'm I. I think at one time they were building strings, but I don't think they have are building strings right now. I really don't. There you go. On the topic still of strings, favorite string for a dreadnought. I still have my preference, my favorite string still to this day, and I went back and tried them again, and I still love them the best. And this is. Uh, controversial in the shop. I love the GHS Americana set because it has a phosphor core, phosphor, or a bronze plated core. Sounds a little bit more rounded. That's my favorite uh, sounding set. My favorite playing set is the D'Addario Accesses right now. That is my go to. I do like the new String Joys in the uh, Naturals. They had a unique tone on my guitar. I liked it a lot. I don't know if that's going to be my go to, but I did like it a lot. I did too. Is that what you're going with? Mm -hmm. The String Joy Naturals or the Foxwoods, the coated one? Um, 
either at this point. I've been using the Foxwood coated ones, and um, I think that they make my mid-range a little bit more resonant and seems to be a little bit easier to play for me. Okay. So. I honestly did not like the Foxwoods. That was one thing I can tell you. For me, they were a little bit dull. <clears throat> but I did like the Naturals a lot. So, but I, again, I will say this about String Joy. First time I've ever had a string that I really truly thought made a difference in tone that was a Phosphor Bronze string. I've always been of the belief that tone-wise, Phosphor Bronze, there's only minute differences and it's mostly in the gauges and you know that kind of stuff because it's pretty much the same exact thing from each of them. But I will say, fairly dramatic difference in tone and playability of the String Joys. Mm -hmm. so. Jerry, are okay. you bored with this yet? What are you using for your favorite Phosphor Bronze string? Yeah. That's a good joke. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, somebody put on here earlier, Jason seems to be reflecting a lot today. <laughs> this is a reflection. Are you tired, Jay? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> of me, he says. <laughs> All right. So, real quick, I did have one more question this week. John, what is your favorite slash best boutique guitar under 5,000 that you carry? Best boutique guitar under five thousand. Your we carry. favorite or your best? I under the five thousand mark. Gosh, it's probably going to be the Bedell, especially these new coffee houses that we just got done. Those are fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's going to be it right now, at that price point. Uh, I, I mean, at a lot of price points, that's a great guitar. That's so a I solid like that answer. Mm -hmm. Good answer. There you go. All right, did you guys want to play another tune? Do we have any of our last uh, requests coming in? It is. Way past later. time. It is time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> Jason, Jason's going to go get a nap. That was my. Uh, is that the Blind Melon? Melon? Last yeah. tune. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> what do you want to play, guys? I don't know. What, what can we play to get on out of here? Hey, Trent, you want to sing one? A... What do you want to sing? You're still on my mind by who? Do I know this one? Oh, George Jones. Why are you going to make it difficult? Is that like, she paints uh, steel cars? I just saw uh, Jay, my microphone just fell. So That's be great. ready. I muted it. Some wrestling. I've muted. Some wrestling sounds. Somebody on TikTok says, Love that you're Trumpet Labs. We do too. They're awesome. Where are we? Thank Where? you, Liz, for joining us today. Thank you for hanging out with us. Oh, Liz. absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for joining us, Liz. Um, Where are we located? We are in Springfield, Missouri. For that, to answer that question. Oh, yeah, the Straight do, 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 do. Yeah. It's totally honky tonky. All right. Are you kicking it off? Uh, well. One more I keep saying And then I'll go home What good would it do me? I know what I'll find An empty bottle A broken heart And you're still on my mind The people Having their fun while I sit here crying over what you have done. My pockets are empty, a fast drink of wine, last drink, an empty bottle, a broken heart.
forsaken So blue I couldn't die I just sit here drinking till the bottle runs dry to try and forget you. I turn to the wine, an empty bottle, a broken heart, and you're still on. An empty bottle, a broken heart, and you're still on my mind. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Little George Jones for you right there. Hope you had fun with us. It was, uh, this was uh, Shop Talk. That's what this was. And, uh, yeah, we're going to go uh, chill out for a little while, and hopefully Jeremy comes back to life. It would be nice, so. Never he mistake may. Jeremy for Trent. Never. There is a stash outbreak in the acoustic shop. That's correct. Also. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, there we'll you see go. You guys. Absolutely. Bye -bye. See you later. Thank you, Hinkley. Bye -bye, guys. Thank you, guys.